All right. Well, as we get started, I do want to first of all say to uh, Evie and anyone else watching, it is uh, Spirit Week here at Grace Christian School, and today is Backward Day, or Mixed Up Day, or Backwards and Inside Out Day. So anyway, I did not lose all fashion sense, and my name today is Yaxedon Rum. And uh, so anyway, there's there's a reason for this. It's not just because I'm weird. I mean, I might be, but that's not the reason, okay? It's, it's Spirit Week. All right. You should see some of them. Even the ones who didn't try, they still look pretty goofy. Anyway, page 182. <laughs> now, if you're offended, it means you feel like you look goofy. If you sat there like, he's not talking about me, that shows you have confidence. <laughs> they all suddenly sat up straight. All right, page 118 in your textbooks. We were working with signed numbers. We took a quiz yesterday or in our last lesson, depending on when you're watching this, bless you, and over adding signed numbers. And for adding signed numbers class, we have two rules. If the signs are the same, add and keep the sign. And if the signs are different, we subtract and choose the sign of the greater absolute value. But, Griffin, in our last lesson, which you didn't watch apparently, um, we, uh, we started multiplying signed numbers. And we said when we multiply signed numbers, we have totally separate rules. They're actually easier rules in my opinion. When we multiply sign numbers class, if the signs are the same, it is automatically a positive. positive. If the signs match class, for a multiplication problem, you're going to see parentheses up against each other or a raised dot. If you have a multiplication problem, the signs are the same class, it's automatically positive. positive. If the signs are different, it's automatically negative. negative. You don't have to think about which one's greater or keep that sign or anything like that. But you do have to make sure you note, I'm going with multiplication rules not the addition rules. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. We also had a rule for if we have multiple factors. For instance, uh, and Griffin, if you look down at the bottom of page 118, numbers 9 through 14, it's not just two numbers being multiplied, it's several numbers in a row being multiplied. Our rule if there's multiple factors is this. You count how many uh, negatives. negatives. How many negatives do you have? We don't care about positives. All we care about is negatives. Okay? Positives just do what they're supposed to. Negatives are the bad apples you got to watch out for. So we count how many do we have in the class. I mean, how many do we have in the problem? And uh, so how many negatives are there? If we have an even number of negatives, that's going to produce a positive. positive. It's as if one negative can cancel with a second, and a third can cancel with a fourth, and a fifth. It's kind of as if they cancel each other out if there's an even number. But if there's an odd number of negatives, our answer is going to be negative. 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 Let's work through these. Number one, are the signs the same or different, uh, Elaine? Different. So my answer is going to be negative. negative something. In this case, it's negative 21. 21. Number two, Joel, my signs are same. same, so I'm going to get a positive. positive, and my answer happens to be positive 24. positive 24. Do you have to write the positive, Joel? Now, we can be lazy and leave it understood, as long as we realize that it is positive. Uh, number nine, signs the same or different, Kirsten? Different. Different, so my answer is going to be negative. negative. In this case, it is Thir negative, 36. negative 36. Number four, signs the same or different, Ben? Same. same. So my answer is going to be? Negative. If they're the same? Uh, Anytime the signs match class, positive. my answer is positive. positive. So if the signs are the same, then it's going to be positive. positive. In this case, it's going to be? Um, 1 times 16, Ben? 16. 16. There we go. No, I know it's Monday. Wake up. 1 times 16, 16. There we go. Positive 16, our answer. Number five, Griffin, you weren't here, but I know you can do it. Signs the same or different? Different. So positive or negative? Negative. In this case, negative. 90. 90, our answer. Number six, same or different, Michael? Same. So we get a? Positive. Positive in this case? 84. 84. Number seven, Jalen, same or different? Same. No, different. Different. So my answer is going to be? Anytime signs are different, Jalen. Negative. In this case, number seven, we get negative 63. 63. Number eight, though, Griffin, there's one exception to the same different rule, and that is if one of the factors is zero, it ain't positive or negative. Class, it's just zero, zero for number eight. Number nine, how many negatives do we see, Corey? Four. Four. Is that even or odd? Four. Even. It's as if these two cancel, those two cancel. So it's an even number of negatives. So my answer is going to be a positive. positive. And in this case, it's going to be Positive one. Number 10, how many negatives do we see, Luciana? Four. Three. three. Four factors, but only three of them are negative. Is that even or odd? odd. And since I have an odd number of negatives, my answer is going to be? Positive 16. Oh, if I have an odd number of negatives, we said the answer is going to be negative, so my answer should be 
Negative 16. There we go. Number 11, Bryson, how many negatives? Is that even or odd? So my answer is going to be? Positive in this case. Positive 50. Number 12, how many negatives do we see here? Elaine? Two. Is that even or odd? Even. So positive or negative? Positive. In this case? Positive 100. Positive 100. Do you notice, Griffin, I'm telling them, get the sign first. Then worry about the number. Look at number 13. How many negatives do we see, Griffin? Um, three. Is that even or odd? Odd. So positive or negative? Negative. Now, the, write the negative, and now let's think. What's four times two? Eight. Times three. 24. So our answer is? Negative 24. Negative 24. There we go. Number 14. How many negatives do we see, Griffin? Um, two. Is that even or odd? Even. Positive or negative? Positive. Positive. Now let's do three times two is? Um, six. Times ten. Sixty. So our answer is? Positive sixty. Positive sixty. Did anyone go fourteen for fourteen on that section? You got them all right. Okay, questions on that. I know Ben used a homework pass. Griffin didn't work here last time. Go ahead. Questions, especially you two gentlemen? Any questions at all? All right, any questions for the rest of the class? All right, look across the page. Kind of putting it in reverse here. My answer for number 15 class has to be a negative 42. Well, the only way to get a negative is if the signs are yeah. different. Yeah. Well, we've already got a negative for my first factor, which means the missing factor class has to be a positive. positive. And what times 7 gives 42? Six. So it's got to be a positive 6. How many figured out a positive 6 had to be in that blank? Number 16, my answer comes out as a positive 90. Well, the only way to get a positive class is if the signs are the same. same. Well, I've already got a negative in the second factor, so the first factor must be negative, negative also, so the signs will match. And in this case, I need a negative nine. 9 to match the negative 10 to give me the positive 90. How many had negative 9 in the blank for number 16? Number 17, what sign do I need in the blank, Griffin? Um. Positive. Positive, because I need the signs to be different to produce the negative answer, right? In this case, I want what in the blank? Positive 8. Positive 8. How many had positive 8 in the blank for number 17? Any questions on those three problems? Thinking in reverse just a little bit. All right, let's take a look at number 18 and read that for us, if you would, Kirsten. The Bay of Plenty separates New Brunswick from Nova... Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia. And Nova Scotia, Canada. In the bay, the tides rise at an, an average of 8.9 feet per hour. Maximum high occurs in about six hours. How high will the ocean water level rise after six hours? Yeah, it's, it's noted for this. You know, how many of you have ever been to the beach or something and noticed how the water gets higher or lower as the tides come in or out? Usually, like where I grew up, I grew up in Pensacola, Florida, so I, I would see as we were driving across bridges, tides higher, tides lower, maybe four or five feet at the most. That's been almost nine feet an hour. That's ridiculous. Can you imagine being like playing at the beach and all of a sudden, like within the hour, you're covered in water? Like, it's a little, little bit dangerous, right? But uh, incredibly fast, you have to, if you were navigating this, you'd have to account for tides, right? If you've got a, a larger vessel, you can go through, but you could better go through while it's high tide because low tide, you're going to be like sitting stuck in the mud. Anyway, um, so anyway, it says 8.9 feet every hour, and it takes six hours to get to maximum height. Um, how high does the ocean level rise from lowest to highest in those six hours? What do you have to do, Kirsten? Have to multiply the 8.9 times 6. Good, 8.9 per hour times 6 to get? 53.4 feet. There we go. How many have? 53. Point four feet for number 18. Excellent. Number 19, read that for us, Bryson. The white trail would have exceeded the 155 miles per hour on the highway without traffic. With traffic, the white trail would have exceeded like 25 miles per hour. What is the difference between that speed? All right, so in other words, he, there's traffic. Uh, I mean, you know, the, the highway through Phoenix City, for instance, there's stoplights all along the way. And the same road, after you get out of Phoenix City, there's no stoplights for a while. So you can travel at a good clip there. That's what he's doing, right? Travels at a good speed, still following the speed limit, uh, with, when there's no traffic. And then there is traffic. He has to slow down and stop. And so his average speed drops considerably. It says, what's the difference in speeds? What does it want us to do here, Bryson? Yeah, difference just means subtract. So we get? 30 miles per hour. How many have 30 miles per hour on number 19? Questions on that? Uh, then some review. Now, on number 20 class, am I multiplying or am I adding? Adding. I am adding. Now, you look at it, you're like, 
It looks to me like it says subtract, but do we ever really subtract, class? No. We add the inverse. So we could look at this as negative 4 minus 1. If we look at it as minus 1, class, we're going to add the inverse. inverse. Or I told you, you could look at this as negative 4 plus negative 1, which is what it is. You can just be lazy. Instead of writing plus negative, you just look at it as negative 4, negative 1. Add them together. Signs are the same, class. What's the rule? Add, add and keep, keep the, the sign. sign. If it were multiplication, automatic positive. But it's addition. Add and keep the sign. What should we get for number 20, class? Negative 5. Negative 5. Number 21, signs are different. Subtract, keep the sign of the greater, class? 7 on 21. Negative 7, keep the sign of the greater. Negative 7 on 21. Number 22. I don't look at this as 2 minus 7 plus 7 minus 9. I look at this class as positive 2, negative 7, positive 7, negative 9. You see that? And I see a negative 7, and I see a positive 7. And I'm adding, so we would look at these as additive Inverse. inverses, which always cancel, cancel to get a 0. So we ignore that part. Really, class, I have 2, negative 9. Well, isn't that what we just had in number 21? 2, negative 9, or negative 9 plus 2. Same answer. Number 22 should also be negative, negative seven. 7. How many negative 7 for number 22? Number 23. Here's how I read this class. I read negative 18, negative 15, negative 23, and it says minus negative 4. No, 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 no. Not minus negative 4, class. Plus positive 4. I'm just going to write positive 4, and then it says negative 1. If there's lots and lots of numbers, remember, and there's not additive inverses that cancel, I told you get all your positives together, get all your negatives together, and get one answer. Well, there's only one positive, class. Four. There's a whole bunch of negatives. And if we combine a negative 18, a negative 15, a negative 23, and a negative 1 all together. Well, let's see. Negative 18 and negative 15, class. Do I need 2? What's 8 plus 5? Um, 13. Okay, carry the one. So that should be a negative 33. Negative 33, negative 23. 56. Negative 56, negative 56, negative 1. 57. Negative 57. Okay, so we got our, took a while, but we've got all our negatives together. We've got our one positive. Now, one time, we subtract and choose the sign of the greater absolute value. What should we have for number 23, class? Negative 53. Negative 53. How many have that on number 20? Oh, several of you. Good. Number 24, mm-mm, I ain't doing it. It says 4 minus negative 20. Michael, we need to change that to? Positive. 4 plus positive. 4 plus positive. In other words, 4 plus 20. Well, Chloe could do that. What's 4 plus 20, class? 24. 24. Uh, look at number 25. Again, here's how I'm reading this. I'm reading this as a positive 13, negative 6, and then it says minus negative 12, class? Plus, plus positive, positive 12. 12. Uh, negative 8, negative 1. It says minus negative 7, class. Positive, uh, positive. positive 7. Okay, so I've got a positive 13, a positive 12, and a positive 7. 13 and 12, 25, 25 and 7, 32. 32. Okay, then I got a negative 6, negative 8, negative 1. Six, negative 6, negative 8. 14. Negative 14, negative 1. 15. Negative 15. Be careful here. 32, negative 15. Subtract, keep the sign of the greater class. 17. Positive 17. How many have that answer in your homework last night or over the weekend? And then number 26, got to add the inverse negative 15 plus positive 25, Jalen. Um, okay. Positive 10 is correct. How many have that? Number 27, determine the missing number. What do you have to add letter A to a 5 to get all the way down to a negative 6? Elaine? A negative. A negative what? Oh. Uh. You're right. If I start at 5 and I want to have way back here at negative 6, I've got to add a negative something. But negative how much? Negative 11. Negative 11. Good job. No, letter B. I have a 7 and I want to wind up at a 3. What do I have to add to a 7 to wind up at a 3, Joel? Negative 4. Negative 4. Now here's, ooh, I've got a negative 2 and it says minus something. Hmm. Well, what would I add, class, to a negative 2 to get a negative 3? I'd add, a neg I'd add a negative 1. But this wants me to subtract. So instead of adding a negative 1, I would need to subtract a positive, positive one. 1. How many figured out you needed a positive 1 on letter C? That was tricky. Um, questions on those? And then number 28, find the GCF and LCM of 32 and 48. Uh, GCF, what you got, Jalen? 16. 16. Corey, what you got for the LCM? 96. 96. Great job on that. Questions on the homework.
questions. I don't know. Turn over to page 121. I want you to do the review section on page 121. Save the percent problems for last. So do all the other stuff and then hit the percent problems once you're done with the other. But do page 121. The review section numbers, I think it's 49 to 60? Yes. Page 121, the review, 49 to 60.
few people finished. a little bit longer to be finishing. We'll take a look at these together. And uh, number 49, what do we get when we multiply there, Corey? Well, 54. Positive 54, number 50, Luciana. Negative 12. Negative 12, number 51, Bryson. Negative 72. Ooh, careful, let me negative 6 times 12 is 72. 7 times 12 oh. is? Negative 84. Negative 84, there we go. Number 52, Griffin. Um. Zero. Zero. Number 53. Put that negative 20 over 1. We do a little bit of canceling here. Curious what you got, Michael. Negative 6. Negative 6. Great job. How many figured that out? Hadn't done a fraction in a while, right? So think of it. I know they use the parentheses here, class, but imagine if they use the usual times sign, negative 20 over 1. Well, we know 10 and 20 cancel to give 1 and 2. In this case, it cancels to give 1 and negative 2. And then 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Good job. Uh, number 54, Jalen. 54, 30. Positive 30. Number 55, there's two ways to do this one. It says 25% of 228. What's the most basic way to tackle this, Elaine? 228 times 0.25. Yeah, you can multiply 228 times 0.25. But if you're lazy, like me, and you know that 25% is what fraction class? One fourth. Multiplying by one fourth, because that's what of means is multiplying, is the same thing as dividing by four. Four goes into 22, five times two left, four goes into 28, seven times, boom, there's your 57. Super easy. But if you multiply by 0.25 and get 57.00, uh, that's fine as well. Uh, number 20, 56 says 26 is 130% of what number? Do I multiply or divide here, Kirsten? Divide. I'm going to actually divide, right? Because it doesn't give me both sides of of. What gets divided by what here, Kirsten? 1.3 gets divided by 26. Oh, uh, the way around. Remember, we're going to bring the 1.3 down underneath it and make it a 1.3 outside. The top dog goes inside. We'll move over once. How many times does 13 go into 26, class? Twice. Twice. Anything left? No. How many times does 13 go into zero? Zero. Zero. There's our answer. How many figured out 20? Our answer for number 56. All right, and then uh, number 57. It says 12 is what percent? That's a W. Of 30. Again, am I going to multiply or divide, class? Divide. I'm going to divide. And just like we brought the 130% under as a 1.3, so I'm going to bring the 30 under, just like this. And I could reduce that a little bit, though. How would, what would I divide out of top and bottom here, Ben? Uh, two. To get? And, and then what can I divide out again? Um, three to get two and five. Two fifths. And class, we've memorized two fifths as a decimal, though it has been a while. Who remembers? Point four. Point four. And if we want a percent, I just have to go boink boink, class. Forty percent. Forty percent. How many had forty percent? Ooh, it's been a while, hadn't it? Number 58 says expand and multiply 3 cubed times 5 squared. How do I expand 3 cubed? What does 3 cubed actually mean, Joel? Um, this times this times this. Right, so 3 cubed literally means 3 times 3 times 3. Yeah, so what does 3 cubed mean, Joel? And then it says times 5 squared, so I need to also then multiply by five times, five. 5 times 5. Well, if we multiply all that together, did you do that? 
All right, what'd you get? 675. Outstanding. How many had 675 for number 58? Number 59, it says uh, in this problem, don't actually multiply it. It just says, will the product be positive or negative? Ben? Uh, number 59. Positive. positive. Why will it be positive? Uh, because there's two negatives. Two negatives, and that's an even number of negatives. How about number 60? We're not multiplying that thing out. It just wants to know what's the sign of the product, and what is its sign, Jalen? Negative. Negative. Why? Because there's an odd number of negatives. Yeah, there's uh, five negatives. That's an odd number of them. Questions on the review. Anyone perfect on all the ones you got to, all the ones you did? All right, question, Michael? Um, per number, uh, is, I'm pretty sure it's number 56. Mm -hmm. Um, like on the board, couldn't we have this like while we're in the fraction tip? Yeah, can we have done that too? Oh, excuse me, we don't need that there. Yeah, absolutely. And then you get the two zero and still get twenty. Yeah, you don't have to actually put in the division house. Good question. Yes, ma'am. So on fifty three, yes. the fraction one. Yes. I did point three times twenty. Oh, that works too. Yeah. So uh, Elaine said instead of three tenths, she said, well, this is point three times negative twenty. And she said, well, that's a negative 6.0 or negative 6. So, or she could have said, well, the 0 cancels out with the decimal. It's 3 times negative 2, which is kind of where we got here canceling the 10. Good question. Good. Other questions, comments? Good feedback. All right. Flip back to page 119 now. We have talked about adding signed numbers, class. And we said, if you add the signed numbers and the signs are the same, add, add and keep the sign. sign. If you're adding signed numbers and the signs are different, Subtract and choose the sign of the greater absolute value. We said if it tells us to subtract sign to numbers, we like, no, nah, we don't do that here. Class, if it says subtract, we add the inverse. Add the inverse. If we multiply sign numbers and the signs are the same, positive. positive. If you multiply sign numbers and the signs are different, class, negative. negative. So we come to dividing sign numbers. But think about it this way. Division is literally the opposite process, the reverse process of multiplication, right? So if to multiply same signs you get a positive, then dividing same signs also has to give you a positive. If multiplying opposite signs produces a negative, then if you divide opposite signs, it also has to produce a negative. So you see the rules there. It's the same thing as multiplication. If the dividend and divisor have the same signs, you get a positive. Different signs, negative. It's the same thing as multiplication, but you're dividing, not multiplying. So, multiplication or division, doesn't matter, class. Signs are the same. Positive. Signs are different. Negative. negative. Thank you, Kirsten plus Echo. Class, all of us together, nice and strong. If you're multiplying or dividing signed numbers and the signs are different, negative. negative. If the signs are the same, positive. positive. That easy. Look at the examples at the bottom of page 119. Notice on letter A, are the signs the same or different, class? Same. same. They're both negative. So we know our answer is going to be oh, positive, God. and 25 divided by 5 is? Five. So it's positive 5. Look at the next one. Well, the signs the same or different? Yeah. It's right below it, by the way. Letter B. Signs the same or different? Yeah. Different. So we know our answer is going to be negative, negative and 25 divided by 5 is? Negative 5. Negative 5 in this case. Now notice, you, they could use a division symbol, the dot bar dot thingy. Or the best way to show division algebra is with a fraction. So getting you used to seeing a fraction bar, that doesn't mean, class, negative 25 fifths. It means negative 25 divided by 5. Make sense? So turn the page. And I want you to do just numbers 1 through 9. Do just numbers 1 through 9 at the top of page 120. Do not go past number 9. done already. Wake up, Corey. I just have a quick question. Can yeah. you say the name one more time? Yoxodon. Yoxodon Rome.
Well, we'll just do it with the opposite arm for now. All right, number one, what'd you get? Uh, let's start with Ben. Two. Oh, Ben, are the signs the same or different? Different. So we should get a? Negative. Negative two. There we go. How about number two, Ben? Uh, negative three. Negative three because the signs are different. Number three, Griffin? Negative one. Negative one. Number four, Bryson? Negative two. Number five, Luciana? Positive six. Here. Now, you don't have to write the positive, but it is a positive six because the signs are the same. How about number six, Corey? Positive five. Signs are the same. Number seven, Jalen. Negative four because the signs are different. Number eight, Michael. Negative three because the signs are different. Number nine, back to Ben. Uh, four. Positive four because the signs are the same. How many got all nine correct? All right, go on to 10 through 20 now. 10 through 20. Don't go past 20. Number 10, what did you get, Elaine? Nine. Nine. And number 11, Joel? Mm, negative 12. Negative 12. Number 12, Kirsten? Five. Positive five. Number 13, Ben? Mm, nine. Positive nine. Number 14, Griffin? Nine. Positive nine. Number 15, Michael? Nine. On number 15? Pay attention, boy. Positive 10. Positive 10. Stay focused. Number 16, Jalen. Negative 3. Negative 3. Number 17, Corey. Negative 5. Negative 5. Number 18, Luciana. Positive 4. Positive 4. Number 19, Bryson. Negative 4. Number 20, Elaine. 2. Positive 2. How many got all of those correct? Questions on dividing signed numbers. Seem pretty easy, especially after working on multiplication? Should. Now, look at number 21. This, this is just them being ordinary, okay? We got a 12, and it says it's divided by 3 fourths. Well, a couple of things. First of all, class, do we ever divide fractions? No. no. We multiply by the reciprocal. reciprocal. So the first thing we need to do is realize this is actually 12 times, class, 4 thirds. Four thirds. Also, it would help if I put the 12 over one. 1. So we can see that the 12 is allowed to cancel with the 3, three to get one. one and four. And now we multiply four times four. Do I need to say one times one is one? No. Nah, it's in the denominator. It's not wrong if you say 16 over one, but I'm lazy. I'm just going to say 16. Look at number 22. We've got a negative 24, and it says divided by eight ninths. Joel, we ain't going to divide it by eight ninths. What are we going to do? We're going to times it by the reciprocal. Which is? Nine over eight. Nine eighths. And then we can cancel. Class, the 8 cancels with careful the negative 24 to give me negative, negative, three. negative 3. And, of course, one. 1. If the denominators are just 1s, though, I don't care about them anymore. I'm now multiplying negative 3 times 9, class. Negative 27. Because the signs are different, negative 27. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You finish out 23 to 26. Just four more problems in that section, 23 to 26.
Ladies of Trap. Let's see how we did on these. Volunteer for number 23. Michael? 80, negative 80. Negative 80 is correct. Great job. Volunteer for number 24. Volunteer for 24. Bryson? Positive one. Great job. How many, though, realized you don't even need to take, need to take the time to flip them? Like, anytime, thing you divide, anytime you divide something by itself, it always just equals one. How many realize that? How many realized that after you'd already flipped and said negative three-fourths, negative four-thirds, everything cancels? Oh, duh, it's one. Then you kind of realized, oh, yeah. Okay. But positive one is correct because negative divided by negative is positive. How about number 25, Luciana? 115. 115th. Great job. It's the nine that flips. What did you get when you flip a nine class? One ninth. One ninth. Good. You're not flipping the three-fifths that time. How many got one fifteenth? That was a tricky one. And then number 26. So let's go to... See, Griffin, what did you get? I didn't get that Didn't one. get that far. Uh, Bryson, go two for two. Positive 20, because negative times negative, positive again. Positive 20 is correct. The questions on those. Not that you're going to see those a whole lot, but you know, good practice. All right, drop down to 27 to 35. Figure out what number must go in the blank. 27 to 35 now. Think about what sign you must have based on the sign of the answer. So the quotient, if it's positive, you better make sure you use the same sign. If the quotient's negative, better use the opposite sign of what they already gave. Figure out what number and sign goes in the blank.
right, let's take a look. Number 27, and what'd you get for your answer, Jalen? One. One. Number 28, Corey? Uh, negative 12. Negative 12, because we needed different signs. Number 29, Luciana? Negative 4. Negative 4, because we needed same signs. Number 30, Joel? Nine. Positive 9, because we needed different signs. Number 31, Kirsten? 1, or positive 1. Well, careful, if you divide a 1 by a negative 7, it's not going to give you a negative 7. What has to be divided by a 7 to get a 7? Uh, wait. What has to be divided by 7 to get 7? You have to have a bigger number to start with. Oh. Class? 49. 49. You think 7 times 7 is 49, so that if you take a 49 and divide the 7, you get the 7. So it should be a positive 49, though, because we need different signs to produce the negative. How about number 32? Back to Kirsten. Positive 3. because we needed same signs. Number 33, Michael. Like positive 11. Positive 11 because we needed different signs. Number 34, Griffin. Negative 8. Negative 8 because we needed same signs. And number 35, Elaine. Negative 36. Negative 36 because we needed same signs. Great job. Questions on those? How many got all nine correct? Anyone like that? Several of them. Wow. Let's talk down to word problem number 47 and read that for us if you would, Luciana. All right, now here's the deal. We could represent a gain with a positive sign, and a loss class we could represent with a <laughs> negative sign. So this guy did not do well on his investments because it says he had a loss of 2400 on investment A. So let's make that a negative 2400 It says he had a gain of $1,200 or $1,200 on investment B, and then another loss, loss on his third investment. I'm going to put this out of order. I'm going to use the commutative property to put the negatives together. How much total loss did he have on his first and third investments class? Negative $9,600. Now, he did gain $1,200 on one of them, but that is not nearly offsetting his loss, is it? What was his total loss for the year going to be now, class? Good. Here, we add and keep the signs because the signs are the same. Here, we subtract keep the sign of the greater because the signs are different. But notice how it said... What was his average Month. monthly gain or loss? Well, if this is for the year class, stay with me. I need to divide, divide, by, 12. divide by 12. Now, we're only going to divide 84 by 12 class. Seven. And then we're going to hang those two zeros. And don't lose your Seven. negative sign. In other words, he averaged $700 a month loss on these investments. That's why his wife has the facial expression she does <laughs> in the picture. Real quick, stay with me. Number 48. Go ahead and read number 48 as well, if you would please, Jalen. The average monthly minimum temperatures recorded in Denver Bay, Ontario were as follows in January through December. Negative, uh, negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit, negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit, negative 19 degrees Fahrenheit, zero degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, all those temperatures, and then it says, sorry. Okay. What was the average of the minimum temperatures? All right, so to find the average class, what am I going to have to do? How do you average things? You uh, put them all together. Add them all together. And then you count how many numbers and then you divide by that. There we go. Add like for instance with grades, right? You add up all your stuff, figure how many there are, divide by how many there are. Well, there's 12 months. So we know, class, we're going to divide the sum by 12, right? We just got to figure out the sum. But remember, I've got positives and negatives here, correct? So let's get all our positives together first. I see a 25, I see a 33, a 41, a 41, a 36, a 22, and a 3. Let's add all the positives together very quickly. Let's see here. 3 and 5 class makes 8. eight. If I put a 2 with an 8, that's 10. ten. And then 6 and 3 is Nine. plus 1 more is another 10. ten. So that's 20 plus 1 is 21. 21. Carry the 2. Let's see, I've got 4 and 4 is, eight. plus 2 is, ten. 10. 2 and 3 is, five. and 3 and 2 is another, five. so that's another 10. 10 and 10 is, 20. 20. So total, that's positive 201. That's the months with positive temperatures. 
Now let's look at our negatives. We've got uh, negative 20, negative 23, negative 19, and negative 1. Well, let's start with the negative 19, negative 1 class. That's negative 20. Negative 20 and negative 20. Negative 40, negative 40, and negative 23. Negative 63. So we get all our positives together. Get all your negatives together. Now, put the positive with the negative. At your seats, what is the actual sum of all these temperatures, all these minimum temperatures for each month? Call it when you've got it. Careful. Positive 138. Should be correct, right? If we borrow, borrow, negative positive 138. Divide that by 12. 12 is in the 13? Once with one left over. 12 goes into 18 with six left over. 12 goes into 60. So the average temperature was positive 11.5 degrees. Fahrenheit. It's cold. Jeez. Very cold. People up in Canada are nuts. Anyway. <laughs> Between the Bay of Fundy flooding everybody and uh, this freezing cold temperature. We thought it was anyway, bad. it's just cold up there, eh? Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, homework for tonight, homework for this evening is to do page 121, numbers 1 to 22. Page 121, do that homework section 1 to 22. We'll take a look at all of that in our next lesson. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and you are dismissed. Thank you.